A lot of people out there promote low-carb, high-protein diets as being good for just about everything, especially among men. But does the actual science support that? Today I am going over scientific studies on how low-carb diets, high-protein diets, and the combination of low-carbs and high-protein affects testosterone and cortisol levels in men. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. Today I am focusing on a recent meta-analysis of 27 studies that looked at how diets that are either normal or low in carbs and normal or high in protein affect testosterone and cortisol in men. And you may have heard about this meta-analysis before, but even if you have, I would pretty much guarantee that I'm going to tell you about some results that you haven't heard from other people talking about it, because they are not easily available in the abstract, and they do require some actual digging into the paper and the supplement, and actually looking at the studies that go into this meta-analysis. And as a reminder, meta-analyses are the gold standard of studies because they look across a bunch of studies and pull out the average finding from all of them so we can make sense of studies that find conflicting results. And all the studies that the researchers looked at, looked at either or both, low carb versus normal carb and normal protein versus high protein. And the researchers used 35% as the cutoff for defining between these two diets. So low carb was considered less than or equal to 35% carbs, whereas normal carb was higher than that. And then high protein was considered greater than or equal to 35% protein by calorie. And if you're thinking, wait a minute, that seems like too many carbs for low carb, don't worry, I'm gonna break that down later and actually look at how different studies with different percentages of carbs find different effects. And if you're into macros, then you may be thinking, well, 35% protein is really high. That would be very hard to achieve with a normal diet. And yes, that is largely true, but a lot of the low carb diets are also very high protein diets. So things like carnivore, where carnivore folks are recommending getting 40% to even 50% protein is pretty common. And the meta-analysis found that going on a low-carb diet, either short-term or long-term, caused significant drops in men's testosterone. And this was much worse with high-protein diets that were low-carb. And specifically, the meta-analysis found that in studies where the researchers had put men on a low-carb, high-protein diet, their testosterone dropped by an average of 150 nanograms per deciliter. To put that in perspective, that is the equivalent of 37% of the average 27-year-old man's testosterone. And note that average testosterone levels are a lot higher when you're younger. So that level of drop at 150 nanograms per deciliter would be an even bigger percent of a man's total testosterone as they get older. And next, the researchers looked at whether there were any testosterone drops when people were on a low-carb but moderate protein diet. And this is where the results I'm sharing in this video are going to diverge from what you've probably heard before if you are familiar with this study. And that is the fact that in the abstract, the authors say that low carb, moderate protein diets do not cause drops in testosterone. But if you are in science, then you know that you cannot just go by the abstract. That is just the little summary that the authors want <laughs> to be the takeaway from the study, not necessarily what the study found in terms of everything. Whereas if you go to the results and you actually look at the analyses and what they did, you'll find that when they looked at randomized controlled trials, AKA the high quality gold standard studies on low carb, moderate protein diets, then you do see a big drop in testosterone, 27% of the average young man's testosterone to be specific. So when people just read the abstract of this study, they say, oh, moderate protein, low carb diets don't affect testosterone. But when you look at randomized control trials in the meta-analysis, we see the opposite, where you do get testosterone drops. And these negative effects of low-carb diets on testosterone happened at all sorts of different time scales in terms of how long people had been on the diet. So it happened both in the short term, so like three weeks and less, as well as in the long term, all the way up to two months, which is the limit of what the studies in this meta-analysis looked at. So we know it lasts even months after starting a low-carb diet, and it might even get worse beyond that. We don't know yet. And another meta science point, in addition to putting too much stock in abstracts, is a lot of people get confused in interpreting studies on what to do with these cutoffs, like a 35% macronutrient percentage that was used to define low carb versus normal carb diets. So when I went and did some research on what people were saying about this study, I noticed that the low carb people who 
talked about it, we're saying it should be dismissed because 35% is not actually low carb. If you did truly low carb, then it shouldn't cause testosterone drops because they don't think it should. But what that 35% cutoff means is just that diets that were less than that were included in the low carb diet group, but a lot of those diets did have really, really low percentages of carbs, like 4%. And so I went and actually looked in the supplement with the forest plots and the actual tables of the studies and found which carb percentages predicted the biggest testosterone drops across all these studies. And guess what? The study with the biggest testosterone drop happened to be the study with the lowest carb percentage at 3.8% carbs. And the second biggest drop in testosterone was 5% carbs. And another one that had a big testosterone drop was 15% carbs. So what this tells us is that it is not the case that doing truly low carb will prevent these effects, but rather the lower carbs you go, the lower your testosterone goes. So altogether, what this study shows is that being on a low carb diet in the short or the long term causes big testosterone drops in men. And those drops get even bigger if you are on a high protein diet. And it's not the case that doing a truly keto diet will protect you from these effects because some of the biggest testosterone drops were seen in the studies with the lowest carb percentage in the diets. And in addition to testosterone, this meta-analysis also looked at the effects of low-carb diets on cortisol. And as you probably already know, you do not really want more cortisol circulating in your body in a chronic sense because cortisol is a stress hormone that is released in response to stress, typically, and... High levels of it chronically are thought to contribute to insulin resistance, obesity, diabetes, depression, arthritis, osteoporosis, cardiovascular disease, and a lot of other issues. So generally, you do not really want to have high cortisol. And interestingly, this meta-analysis found that low-carb diets caused increases in cortisol release after exercise. It's not clear that post-exercise cortisol increase would cause all the problems I just talked about, but it is something we should be on the alert for, especially if new studies come out showing us what post-exercise cortisol predicts in terms of health outcomes. So I'm gonna stay tuned for studies to come out on that and clarify that for us. But in the meantime, just sharing the result with you so you can make of it what you will. So in sum, this meta-analysis of 27 studies indicates that a low-carb diet or a low-carb high-protein diet in particular may not be the best idea for men who are looking to maintain healthy testosterone levels or even increase their testosterone, because it might actually be doing the opposite. And if you have specific questions that you want answered by the research out there, then I have a way for you to make research requests as well as get bonus findings and bonus content from each video, as well as learning about the video topics before they come out all over on my Patreon. So if you're interested in that, check that out. The link is in the description below. And if you would like to help support me in making these videos with a one-time donation, then please head on over to my GoFundMe. If you like this video or found it interesting or found it helpful, please share it so other people can get this information and hopefully stop potentially decreasing their testosterone levels without realizing it. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.